I know I really enjoyed that devotion this morning. Amen. 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 God, God is in charge, ain't he? Yes, he is. Amen. We want to thank him. He's already in this place. Amen. And we just want to thank him for being here today. And before we go any further, we just want to make sure that you have your minds prepared to hear the word of God. Amen. Right. So let no distractions, amen, distract you from listening to this word. If you have your Bible, we're going to ask you to stand with us as we go to the book of Proverbs today. Proverbs 27, 17. Proverbs 27, 17. It's a very familiar proverb. One that we need. All of us need. Amen? Amen. And this is how it reads. And we want y'all to keep y'all bowels open today because he's going to come back to us with this word and a few other different passages today. But first of all, Proverbs 27, 17. It says, Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. And while you're still standing, let's go up to the sixth verse. Same chapter there. This is what it says. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. We're going to talk to you a little bit today about iron sharpens iron. Amen. Iron sharpens iron. First of all, amen, it's important to note here that a true friend is one that challenges us to become all that God intends for us to be. Amen. That's the definition of a true friend. Amen. The definition of a Christian friend is one who wants for you to do well in the, in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. But we also must be reminded that Christian life is like that of a pilgrim. If y'all understand or uh, did any kind of history, amen, you understand that pilgrims, they didn't have an easy way to go. Right. Amen. Right. They had to make some paths along the way. They had to clear some right away that there was trees and bushes and, and hills and valleys and stuff they had to endure. Amen? Amen. Well, the Christ Christianity is, is kind of like that too. And, ma and matter of fact, the Bible in some uh, instances referenced this life as a pilgrimage. Amen? Amen. Uh, a Christian's life is like a journey of moving through time, I might say. Amen? Amen. Trying to make it toward a goal. We're all trying to make it to a specific goal in life. And that is to glorify God. Amen? All right. All right. And enjoying him forever and forever. Amen? Amen. But sometimes along the way, I think I got some witnesses here. We may become discouraged sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes we even consider abandoning the journey. Can I get a witness? Amen? Sometimes we have trials, amen? Tribulations. There will be some discomforts along the way of a Christian's journey, amen? Sometimes we get tired of the disciplines of Christianity, amen? Sometimes there may be conflicts that arise. Amen. Amen. And then you have your highs and you have your lows. Amen. But we also must note that no pilgrimage is ever solitary. Amen. 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 In other words, there's always somebody with you. Amen. Along the way. You not by yourself, dear Lord, uh, uh, on this pilgrim's journey. Amen. amen. You're going to have somebody with you. Amen. Because God knows that we can't do it alone. Right. Amen. Yeah, amen. We can't do it alone, church. Amen. 
So we have to have somebody to lean on every now and then. Ain't that right? And that's where our scripture coming from today where it says iron sharpeneth iron. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Amen? And so back in the day of pilgrimage, it was too dangerous to take the way by yourself. Amen? You had wolves and you had animals out there that didn't like man. Amen? You had lions and things like that. You had ditches to dig. You had, you, had, you had things to do. So you couldn't do it all by yourself. So God saw fit that we have each other to lean on. Because sometimes it's going to get rough. Sometimes it's rough right now for some. Ain't that right? Sometimes it's going to get tough. And it's tough right now, amen, along this journey. And it's at these times that God will place a true friend along beside us, amen, because he knows that we can't do it by ourselves. One of God's most precious gifts, I say one of God's most precious gifts to us is friends who encourage us and loving us, amen, and challenging us to keep it holy, amen. amen. Challenges us to keep it going, amen, because sometimes we want to stop, amen. When life pressures come down on you so hard, amen, you feel like giving up. But it's good to be able to tell a friend, amen. It's good for a friend to be able to watch you, amen, to know your moods. To, to be able to read you when you're not feeling well, amen? It's good to have a friend that knows you, amen, when you're not feeling well, because sometimes we pride get in the way. And we don't want to tell our friend what's really going on. But a true friend would know, amen, when something's not right. Iron shopping is iron. We're not here to struggle alone, church. God didn't leave us here to struggle alone. There's a lot of depression going on right now. And a lot of it is going on because people think that they are alone. Some people don't even come to church because they think they are the only ones who are depressed. I come to tell you that church is full of depressed people. Amen. Come on to church anyway. Amen. Because iron shopping iron. Amen. That means we need each other day in and day out. Now, quoting John Wesley, he was a theologian. This is what he said. He says, there is no such thing as a solitary Christian. And that the person who tries to live the Christian life without help of other people is like one who tries to climb a rope of sand. A rope of sand is hard to climb out. That's kind of tough, ain't that right? Yeah. Amen. It's impossible. In other words, he's saying that we're going to need somebody. Amen. God is saying that we're going to need one another, church. Iron sharp as iron. And in the Bible, iron represents strength and it also represents endurance. Iron is tough. So it's no mistake that he used iron, amen, in this. When we became Christians, God gave us a uh, place within us. Amen. He, he placed within us power yeah. of iron. Mm. He placed within us power of iron. In other words, endurance and strength. What we're talking about right here is the spirit of God. Mm. All right. The spirit of God is the iron in our life, church. All right now. All right. If we go to Romans 8, 11, the NLT version says, the spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. Do you hear that? The spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in us. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same spirit living within you. I'm talking about iron shopping his iron. Amen. You see, the Spirit of God gives us the ability to be strong. Amen. Yeah, that's what the Holy Spirit do. It gives us the ability to be strong and endure many of life's situations. Amen. 
Men of life's uh, difficulties, I might say, right. along this journey. But over in Proverbs 27 and 17, it implies that we don't always start out that way. Amen. Mm. We don't stay sharp long sometimes yeah. along our way. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we get dull along the way. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. We become dull Christians. Amen. Yeah. There is such a thing, church, as right being dull. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we have to be sharpened up sometimes. And the only way, the best way to do that is that we sharpen up each other. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Keep an eye open for each other. Amen. Yeah. So sometime along the way, you're going to need some guidance. Right. Sometime along the way, you're going to need some counseling too. Amen. Right. Right. Sometime along the way, you're going to need some comfort. Amen? Amen. You're going to need some encouragement from someone else. And this is when our friends come into the rescue. This is when like-minded Christians are here on the behalf of each other. Amen? We all need somebody to help us grow in our faith. We need people to help grow in faith. Amen? This word that's going out today, amen, is helping somebody to grow in faith. Amen? Amen? We all need that help. I remind you here what happened over in 1 Samuel chapter 19 verses 1 through 7. It just talks about how David and Jonathan, amen, they were best friends. Jonathan's father, Saul, amen, was the king at that time. Y'all just drop that down. Y'all can read it later, but 1 Samuel 19, 1 through 7 talk about how, how good friends they were. And what had happened, amen, Saul had got became, had became jealous, amen, really, of David. Because everybody was cheering for him and everybody was rooting for him, amen. So Saul wanted David dead. Now keep in mind, this was Jonathan's best friend. So what happened was Jonathan warned his friend David what was about to happen. And also, he went to meet his dad, Saul. Jonathan went to Saul and told him David hadn't done anything wrong. Now, why you want to kill him? Why you want to kill my friend? He hadn't did, did anything wrong. Matter of fact, he'd been, he been helping you. Amen. Don't you remember when he, he slew Goliath? How quick we forget that day, right? Amen. 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 And after Jonathan had finished, he had talked his daddy out of killing him. Amen. But later on, he came back on to kill him again. But, but the, the point is that a friend, amen, would go and try to rescue the friend, amen. amen. Iron shop is iron here, amen. So we got to understand that Christian friendship is designed to bring us closer to Christ. It's not, uh, friendship is not designed to uh, uh, discourage you, amen. It's not designed to uh, lead you away from Christ, but designed to bring us closer and closer to him. Amen. Amen. We also must know that a fellow Christian friend will tell you what's right, even, amen, if it hurts your feelings. Mm -hmm. That's right. I think I said something that time. Because a friend will be more concerned with your soul, amen, than your feelings. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I'm talking about a true friend now. It may hurt, but really deep down inside, you're going to know that it's right anyway. Amen. Amen. But see, sometimes we get a little dull. Amen. And we need sharpening back up. Amen. Amen. And so that's where that good friend come into play. The good friend going to get you back on track. Just listen to him or her. Amen. Take it in. And I know that's for a fact because over in Proverbs 26, Seven and six, we already said that faithful are the wounds of a friend. Say, faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. I like the way that uh, the NLT version said it says, wounds from a sincere friend are better than many kisses from an enemy. <laughs> Amen. Don't y'all know that your enemy that we give you some kisses sometimes? We'll pat you on the back sometime. All at the same time, amen, trying to stab you in the back. Amen. 
But a true friend, amen, he might put some salt on that wound every now and then. But it's healing, amen. It's a healing process. So take it in, church. Don't be getting disgruntled when somebody tells you what's right, Christian, Christians, amen. When somebody tells you what's right, take it in and try to straighten up. Amen. Because a true friend cares more about your soul than your feelings. Amen. Y'all know Jesus is a true friend, right? He is the friend, ain't that right? God is good, ain't he? And what I like about it, yes sir, he's good all the time. So true friends sharpen you up, motivate you, amen, to do what's right. Proverbs 27, 6 in the B clause says, the kisses of an enemy. We already talked about that, ain't that right? Let us know that we need to be careful on the friends that we choose. Jesus Christ was careful on the friends that he chose. Amen. He just didn't go out and pick anybody to be, be friends. Amen. He knew, amen, the friends that he wanted in his circle. Amen. Friends help each other grow in Christ. Friends won't have us turn our backs on the cross. Amen. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But over in Matthew 28, and some, a lot of us know this, Matthew 28, 19, and 20, the Great Commission, it says, in the 19th verse, say, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of, and of the Holy Ghost. 20 says, Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. Amen. So in essence, church, God set things up so that we, we would need someone to help guide us along the way. It's set up. It's say like go in there and teach nations. Amen. That means somebody got to do it. Somebody got to teach us the right directions. Amen. In this faith. Keep in mind when we are physically born, we don't start out in the 12th grade, do we? Amen. We don't even come into the world knowing even how to walk. We don't even know our own names, matter of fact, when we come into the world. We have to crawl first. That's a learning process, ain't that right? We had to go through some training, amen? We have to uh, fall sometimes. We have to learn how to get back up, but to get back up, you gotta have some strength, ain't that right? And somebody gotta put that strength in you, amen? It takes nourishment, amen? This is nourishment today, amen, that God has given us. Until we are strong enough, amen, to stand against some of these things of the world on our own for a little while, amen. We have to eat a balanced diet, amen, to become healthy and strong. In other words, amen, we got to come and listen to this word of God, ain't that right? We have to feed on his word, amen, not just on Sundays. But every day of the week, there are a lot of scriptures in that Bible, amen? That means that we can take one of those, really, you know, just every day of the, of the year, amen? Every year of your life, amen? We have something to feed on, amen? God left it for us to feed on, amen? That's what the word is all about. So going back to this great commission, amen? Matthew 28, 19 and 20. 19 instruct us to first to baptize. And then after that, he said, instruct us to teach them to observe all things. So he wants us to instruct after we baptize to teach them to observe all things. So in other words, God set it up so that we would always be involved with one another. Amen. Amen. Always sharpening one another up. Matter of fact, this is why Jesus established the church. We must know that Jesus Christ died for the church, y'all. And part of the reason he went to the cross was to create an atmosphere where we would sharpen the iron of one another. God is good, ain't he? Amen. So it's really good to be a Christian, amen? amen. 
But it's awesome to be a Christian amongst Christians. Amen. Amen. There's a little difference, amen. amen. It's good to be a Christian, yes. Yes. but it's awesome to be a Christian amongst other Christians. Amen. In other words, fellowshipping with one another, amen. Yes. Right now. We need to be in the fellowship of other believers. Yes. Amen. amen. Yes. We need to attend a physical fellowship yes. with one another to sharpen one another up. Amen. Yes. How are we going to sharpen up our brothers and sisters, amen, in the faith? Well, we ain't physically seen them for weeks or months or even years, amen. We ain't laid eyes on them in a, in a long time, amen. We don't know the condition they're in, amen. Sometimes you can't tell on the telephone, y'all, Amen. You don't know what the condition they're in, amen, if you don't drop by the house every now and then. Amen. That we don't show up here on the hill every now and then. We, we don't know the condition of one another, amen. So our job is to sharpen one another up. Amen. We can't do that if we don't see you, amen. We can't keep saying that, well, I'm there in spirit. I know y'all heard that one, amen. <laughs> Some even say, I don't actually have to go to church. Amen. I don't have to show up physically. Amen. I'm there in spirit. But God is saying that if you are physically able to do your other daily activities, like the jobs and whatever else you do, if you're able to, some people are not able now to go out. But some people are able to go to work. They're able to go for a walk, a job, amen, a barbershop, whatever, amen. So God is telling those who are physically able, amen, to get about your father's business. Amen. The church is open, amen. Some people are still using COVID. I, I think we talked about that earlier, amen. Somebody, somebody's still using the COVID, amen, but Mount Moriah open, church. Y'all hear me? We're open. Amen. We are open, so uh, we can't use that excuse right now, ain't that right? Amen. You know, some people were glad that, I hate to say it, but it's true. Some people were glad that we shut the church down. Amen. 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 And some people ain't even looked out at the announcement to see if we open it that yet. <laughs> Amen. But the church is open. So let us continue our fellowship one with another. Amen. So that we may sharpen each other up. Iron sharpens iron. Amen. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25. And I'm going to use the NLT because I don't want nobody to say, I don't understand it. Because it kind of breaks it down. It says in the verse 24, it said, let us think of ways to motivate one another. That's right. That's what it says. To acts of love and good works. 25 says, and let us not neglect our meeting together. I'm going to say that again. And let us not neglect our meeting together. As some people do. But encourage one another. Especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Is that plain and clear? There's some good stuff right here. Because... Well, this let me know, Brother Quan, is that some people are discouraging others not to come. All right, now. All right, come on, Pastor. If I were you, I would want to fall into that category. Amen. If you put it says encouragement, then let me know that somebody may be discouraging somebody else. Well, they ain't doing nothing down there anyway. Amen. Somebody saying that. Somebody is discouraging somebody else. That person who are discouraging somebody else not to come is not a true friend. They're just plain and simple, ain't that right? Because the Bible teaches us that a true friend will draw us closer to Christ. So how are we going to draw somebody closer to Christ? By telling them not to come to church. Not to go to church. We're being a discouragement. We're making God unpleased. Amen? God is good, ain't he? Yes, yes, yes. We want to thank God for his word today because 
is his word. Now, about that showing up in the spirit thing. I'm there in the spirit. What can we learn from showing up in the spirit? I'm there in the spirit. Well, every time I said that, I didn't learn anything. Amen. I don't know about you. You may have learned something. I'm talking about me now. When I show up in the spirit, I really haven't learned anything about what went on that day. Amen. I haven't actually seen my brothers and sisters. Amen. So when we show up in the spirit, we become bitter. Amen. Showing up in the spirit makes you bitter. Amen. Showing up in the spirit makes you dull. Amen. Showing up in the spirit makes you distraught. Showing up in the spirit makes you angry. Showing up in the spirit makes you depressed. Showing up in the spirit makes you all that is not good. Amen. First Thessalonians, amen, 5 and 11. It says, wherefore comfort yourselves together and edify one another even as also ye do. In other words, we need to find ourselves comforting one another. Let's go to, I'm going to go to Romans, amen. Chapter 15. And we're almost done. Romans chapter 15, verses 1. Starting at verse 1. Amen. It says there, We who are strong must, consider, must be considerate of those who are sensitive about things like this. We must not just please ourselves. You see that? We should help others to do what is right and build them up in the Lord. For even Christ didn't live to please himself. As the scripture says, the insult of those who insult you, O God, have fallen on me. Such things was written in the scriptures long ago to teach us, and scriptures give us hope and encouragement as we wait patiently for, the God, for God's promises to be fulfilled. And it goes on to say, may God who gives this patience and encouragement help you live in complete harmony with each other. We're together here in this Bible church. We're together here. It says, then all of you can join together with one voice, giving praise and glory to God, the Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. God is good, church. And you know what? He's not playing either. He wants us to be serious about, about him. Romans 12, 15 and 16 says, Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. That means we got to be together again. Amen? We talk about together. Iron sharpening iron. Verse 16 says, Live in harmony with each other. Y'all see that? We're together, church. We need each other. Live in harmony with each other. And it says, don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. Say it again. It said, don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. And I like the other part of it. It says, and don't think you know it all. That's what the Bible said. Amen. Don't think you know it all. A couple of more scriptures I'm going to throw out to you, amen, that God told me to give to you. Galatians 6, 1 through 3. Still speaking from the NLT version, amen, because I want everybody to get a good and clear understanding of what's going on. It says, Dear brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by some sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path. Amen. We need each other. Amen. Amen. It says, be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. And that, and that second verse says, shame is a share each other's burdens. And in this 
way. Obey the law of Christ. So we got to share each other's burden, church. We're in it together again. Ain't that right? That means if you need something, I need something too. Amen. If I need something, you need something. My mother used to say, one for all and all for one. Amen. That's what she wanted her children to believe. And that's what we do. Amen. If one of us needs something, we all need it. Amen. If one of us have something, we all got it. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And we practice that. Amen. And it says here, amen, it said, if you think you are too important to help someone, you are only fooling yourself. Amen. You are not that important. <laughs> That's what it says, amen, the NLT version, amen. We ain't, too, we ain't too big to help nobody, amen, and on, along this Christian journey, we're in it together, amen. In Hebrews 10, 25, it says that, his day of return is drawing near. Amen. We already talked about that. And this brings me bringing us to our clothes. Amen. But we talked about iron sharpening iron. And I remember over in Revelation 19, verse 15. It says, and out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with the rod of iron and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of the almighty God. He's coming back church. They talking about Jesus. Amen. It says out of his mouth goes a sharp sword. So his word, amen, is what we need to be sharpening each other up with. His word is going to be the sword. Amen. No, God is powerful, ain't he? With his words, he do stuff. Amen. Think about it. With his word, he created what? Heaven and earth. Ain't that right? With his word, amen, he's going to smite all nations. With his word. Amen. And y'all know who the word is? Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ is the word. Amen. The one who hung, bled, and died on that cross for all of our sins. Amen. Right. And he's the one, amen, who's going to be coming in riding on that white horse. Amen. All right. He's the one, amen, who's going to uh, have the, that rod of iron in his hand. Amen. Ruling all the nations. All right. He's the one that's going to be judging. Amen. Not us, but him with the word of God. Amen. He's coming back. And he's coming back soon. Amen. amen. So we need to we need to shop each other up. Day in and day out, amen. We need to be con contacting somebody. Rubbing against somebody, amen. We need to keep each other sharp. And the only way to do that is with this word, amen. We got to do it with the word. Amen. The door of the church is open, amen. Iron sharp inside. Iron sharp inside, amen. You may come now. If you don't know Jesus Christ for yourself and, amen, want to get to know him better, amen, today is a good day. The Bible tells us that time is winding up. Amen. Time is drawing near. So if you don't know him, amen, today is a good day to give your life to him. Amen. Today is an excellent day. Amen. Today is the day of salvation. We see that there are none today. Amen. Amen. We've extended the privilege of the open door of the church. Your blood is not required. Amen. God's word for God's people. Amen. 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 Amen.